apartment on the second floor So scared, so new Got the world in my front door Never felt so far away from my dreams But I've never really been so close I know I'm braver than it seems Cause I feel like I've been here before DCC Productions for Danger Canadian Content. We're live from the Factory Girl Gastro Pub in the Danforth. I'm the Moose, and tonight we're talking to Angela Sandy. Welcome. Thank you. Um, star of our first one of our spotlights on uh, Danger Canadian Content. That was a great night in the uh, Horseshoe Tavern. That was really fun. Yeah. It was thanks. really, really fun. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we've been back since. Yes. A little while, a little while yeah, ago. Yeah, I think, I think I remember. That was the Living on the Bright Side single release party. It was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. end yeah. of January. That was the yeah. last time we were there. Yeah, yeah. No, that was uh, that super was, fun. That was a lot of fun as well. It's all the fun, of course. Um, yesterday, um, you were at Blue Washington uh, Folk Fest. Yeah, yes, that so was really weird. great. Yeah. Did we, did, 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 were there people, did you go to see people there, or was it or was it just? Um, uh, it's close to my hood, actually, and it was a really great excuse to bring my dog. So uh, I posted it on social media, just being like, I'm so excited. This is the first time that I get to go to a concert with my little puppy. So it's, he enjoyed it and behaved he, he himself very well. I, I, and well, we, 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 what we did was we came in, and I was there with somebody else who wanted to get out of the sunshine, basically. So we we sat inside the um, we sat inside. We saw two or three. I think we got halfway through Bind Divine Right before we left, and it wasn't them. Okay, was, so I just missed you because I came right at the end of Bind Divine. Right. Uh, Fine, yeah, but yeah. the sun was just shining in it's still. Beautiful. It was just such a gorgeous day. But it's, but it's also, my understanding is that might be the last time they get to do that. That's so, what I heard, yeah. yeah. Which is really sad. But I was talking to some of the drink people because uh, I stayed in you know, some drinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you, and, <laughs> when was, and I, you know, I might seem badass, but I usually don't drink in the park. So, mm -hmm. you know, well, at least not at my age. But, you know, it was one of those things I was like, oh my gosh, this is the first time I've ever like drank in Christy Pitts. I'm with my dog. It's like awesome music. It was just like, this perfect thing and I was talking to the drink people and saying oh you know it's too bad this is the last time we're gonna have this festival here and they said oh well we're pretty sure someone's gonna pick it up well I think someone should because yeah. I, I've been before and one of the beauties of it uh, there was another state and you know in the year years of improvement there were two stages mm. there's not like this little amphitheater slightly further over that's right but yeah. it's it's just a phenomenal venue and yeah. the people are just super brilliant in terms of their arrangement and commitment to music, it mm -hmm. works. Yeah. I, think, I think that's 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 the key. And it'll be a big miss from our calendar if we don't get to go, if I'm honest. Yeah, honest. there's a big demand for it. I mean, like, you could have kids, obviously dogs, you yep. know, like, it's a very family-friendly yep. area and park. And the demand for music, I mean, the, the acts were great, the weather worked out, like, it was just, what a great well, idea. The whole, the, whole, the whole set just works. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we went to, uh, it, as an alternative to go to North Island Days this year, we went to the Great Heart Festival in uh, Trinity's Bell. Oh, cool! Yeah, nice. Wow, that was fun. I haven't been there actually. Oh, I've heard of it. That was, yeah, yeah that, that's been that's been there, you know, year in year out, and it's just been it was just absolutely it's the first year they had it at um, Electrified Amplified. Yeah, it was, it was cool. absolutely brilliant. Yeah. So it's definitely there next year, but I'm, I like you. I'm hoping someone picks up. Uh, I have a feeling there's just, there's there's enough of a demand for it, even just you know in sales. Like if you think of food and beverage, etc. Like I'm I'm hoping they make enough money to, to make it happen. I don't I have the details so. on it. But I hope so. The demand is there. The oh audience God, without is any, without there. any shadow of a doubt. Yeah. It's definitely there, and, and it, it, it's got legacy. I mean, you know, there were a number of not only yourself, but you know, we saw cattle in the audience as well. So there's there's cool. a there's a lots and lots of uh, lots. So it's not just the audience, you know, the artist's appreciation is definitely there as well, so mm -hmm. it just really works. Yeah. So on appreciation, um, one of the things that we did, I mean, I think the first time we probably saw you was in Say What, which is mm -hmm. a little while ago. Yeah. And then you got, and then, and then one of the time we brought some people along last summer to see you play David Pico Square. Different band. Okay. Yeah. Different time in yeah. terms of where, where you're comfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The band you've got at the moment, you seem just completely comfortable around. And, yeah, it's uh, a it, super fun lineup. Yeah. yeah. Um, for the first time, I have a lead guitarist, which <laughs> I didn't have for quite some time. I mean, obviously, I played in a band most of my career. That's mm. a lot of my story before I went and became a solo artist. So to have a lead guitarist again, it's really great because a lot of you know 
duties fall on me as a songwriter, etc. So I have my definite, distinctive guitar parts. But to have that extra, you know, part the parts that accentuate the like different sections and the melody and the harmonies that he that Francois has been able to do has been really great. So that's a big that's a big difference from the first time to the next time. But it's very it's, it's a very much a team effort from that point of view. Then. You're come very comfortable with them. Uh, they're obviously comfortable. You, you're, yeah. quite, you, you're comfortable with them as well, and that breeds that kind of that breeds confidence in terms of what you're doing as mm -hmm. well. You, you, you've got two, you've had two new releases in recent months as well, you know. Yeah, I put so, out two singles this year. Yeah, yeah, which is which is which is tremendous, isn't it? I mean, that gives you. I mean, apart from anything else, it, songwriting. If you if you're not right, if you're not writing, you're not moving on, kind of thing. Yeah. You know, well, there's exactly way more easy. in the bag for sure. Really? Um, the recording part of it is really the most time-consuming and time. Uh, and expensive part. Yeah. The writing is that that's the easy <laughs> that's the easy part really in some ways. Um, but yeah, that's it's been a really good year. I've had a, some really you know just two songs out, but I've got so many more that I've been working on, and I'm in demo land right now. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Population that's interesting. One. <laughs> but, you, but you're in the, the fact that you're you're there. And you've got two releases already this year. Yeah, yeah it's, and it's, it's been really great. Um, Living really on the bright cool. side is still on rotation on Stingray Digital across Canada. So. Yeah. Friends have been texting me like, "Oh my gosh, I heard your song in the Canadian Tire," or like all over. And it's such it's a difficult. Nice. I mean, it's a great audience to play to in Canada, but it's also a very difficult audience because reach. Yeah. Well, you're talking about getting out to people. Mm -hmm. I mean, if okay, so we, we talk quite a bit about being in the UK. You can go 30 miles and just do. You meet different university every 20 or oh, 30 miles, right? I and you were in Leicester yeah. a couple of years ago. Yeah, I loved Leicester. Yeah, and that was okay. and that was tremendous. But you really don't have to travel two or 300 miles to get yeah. to where you want to be. Which, whereas you do. So touring is a big, big issue. That's know? also why I moved to Toronto, um, because with my old band, that was, you know, as I said, I spent most of my career in fronting and kind of leading a band anyway, and we toured across Canada so many times, and we were always trying to get to Toronto, because we're, this is sort of the musical mecca of, yep. you know, of Canada, and we, yeah. we, you know, we were trying to get a deal, we were looking for management, we were showcasing all the time, but, you know, it takes five days to drive across and three thousand dollars later in gas and mm -hmm. hotels and one on one of our last tours we just looked at each other and we just said like mm, just give it a go and just try and move there you know so we left our families back in Calgary and here I am <laughs> but you went back west this earlier this summer yeah I do yeah. go often um, yeah. that's a good thing about putting out these singles it's been exciting because it's an excuse to tour so yeah. <laughs> I have more reasons to because I really love touring it's been crazy not touring uh, I don't have any tour plans right now which is pretty crazy for me because I'm yeah. very used to being on the, on the road so but then going back I mean how's that like then going back because you, you went as I said you went back west earlier this year yeah mm -hmm. that, that, how, how, was, how does that work really great yeah. I was actually there twice this year. Um, one time was also for the Junos because the Juno uh, Juno Awards were in Calgary, right, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. which was great for me because it was like, well, hey, my parents are there. I have somewhere to stay. Like it's kind of obvious. We should go. And um, I ended up getting a, a, a show with T Music. They had like a little showcase area in the hotel where they were doing a lot of things. Right. So it was like a really great opportunity for me. Um, so I was there then, and then I did my first folk festival ever. Um, which is that right. Beaumont Blues and Blues Festival. So that's just uh, pretty, it's pretty much Edmonton. So that was really great for me because my old band used to play in Edmonton all the time too. That's that's just north of Calgary. It's so right. kind of the rival city in Alberta. So. Well, what is interesting, we talked, we talked a couple of times about people about folk festivals in the UK because you move from, it's, again, not with the distances that you, that you get necessarily here in Canada, you can move around to a significant number of folk festivals mm -hmm. and spend the summer touring, you know. Yeah. And as a solo artist, that's a lot easier to do with a guitar yes. than it is with a band. Right? And also my first, well I've done the Via Rail thing, because um, I play on the Via Rail on the train, Ooh. I've done that trip five times, and that's actually how I started when I went solo. That's how I started touring, touring so much, because I could. Right. Um, it was, Free, uh, because I was playing on the rail and I could go all the way out to Vancouver in three and a half days and my best friend lives out of Vancouver and I had an old following there and so it all just kind of made sense to keep going west. Oh sweet, so you, so, don't, you, don't, you, you, so you don't pay for your ticket, you, you pay for your... Yeah, you basically, exactly. So it's a really yeah. great program, it's called the Artists on Board Program through the rail and in exchange for playing for the passengers you get a free fare, a free ride um, and all of your meals are uh, included. So it's wow. like a free room and board. It's like, 
the joke I'd always make would be like, I'm singing for my supper, like literally. <laughs> quite, yeah, yeah. Quite literally. And they let you sell CDs and stuff, and it's been great because I've made a lot of fans on the train. Actually. Well, it, we're going to get to a, to yeah. a tremendously diverse. Yeah, program. the demographic is great because one, um, the most CD sales would obviously be a little bit more the older generation, but also you get a lot of tourists on the mm -hmm. train. So I have fans in Germany now that are like waiting for me to come back because they're like, oh, we love you, we gave your CD to our friends, and you like that kind of thing. I have friends all over the world just it, because of that. Well, and that's brilliant. Because, and that is the, the strange thing about both the these interviews, but also then going into things like Spotify. You can look at your where your audience is. Yeah. And the audience for this is, is in recent months. Has it been in Serbia? It's been in Mexico? It's been in Hungary? Mm -hmm. uh, we've even had two or three viewers in Pakistan, which is that's cool. absolutely brilliant. I can't. How exciting that is. But it's exactly that same, that same thing. Your demographic moves from that point of view. Yeah. Know? And it's uh, it really is important. Really yeah. important. Oh, I haven't, I haven't heard the program, but I mean that's that's absolutely uh, Yeah. That's I can't say enough nice things about the Rail. They really do support the Canadian artist. Well, I, I'll be honest, it's, a, it's because of Canadian artists that we even exist. Uh, There's a lot of us. There's oh, so much amazing yeah, music yeah, coming no out No one told me there was going to be so yeah. many. <laughs> So, talking to Canadian artists, you shared the uh, shared the, the Drake the, the other the, uh, couple of months ago mm -hmm. now, probably with Brooklyn Duran and then uh, America. Yeah, that was a fun show. It was, and and I, it, and I, you can always tell that you're in trouble from a reviewer's point of view when you suddenly realise you get to the end of it and go, "Oh God, I didn't make any notes." <laughs> And you're but you enjoy it. Oh no, so well, that's, that's the whole point. Exactly. We, we took a lot of photos and, right. and we did. We have got the notes to, to review it. Yeah. But there are large gaps in, in some of the things that we do. But it's also indicative, I think, probably more so of the songwriting, almost like the collegiate um, culture mm -hmm. in Toronto that you don't. I, I've never seen that anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've seen British acts kind of go on stage here in Toronto and go, that's very nice. You've never seen them at the bar, never seen them in the audience anywhere else, right? Yeah, doesn't work like that here. Yeah, it's, it's and everybody it's, really knows each other too. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's funny. The longer I live in Toronto, the more I realize how small this circle really is. Mm. It just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Like all the people that you've interviewed, I'm like, oh yeah, I know them. I like well, this is the thing. It's, it, 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 it's, it, that collegiate piece is so important because you've then got collaboration. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, you know, a few weeks after we saw the we saw the show, actually, not even a few weeks, a week after we saw the show, uh, Sean Clark, who's been on here uh, earlier, was playing the Great Heart Festival. Right. And Mary yeah. was his one of his uh, one of one of his. I won't call, I won't even dare call her a backup singer. He was singing. She was singing with him. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I missed that. And yeah. it was just, it was just incredible. And and another and another lady as well. Um, mm -hmm. And it was just absolutely brilliant. So you know, we got into it's 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 that collaboration, that you know, that openness to mm -hmm. willingly work with one another. I just it blows me away. And it's all about community because that's is you, you don't want to live your career in a vacuum. It's really great here in Toronto, I have to say. It, it, it is, it is. And I, so I also noticed that it, on the some of the information for that, that you're at True Bass as well. Are you oh yeah, that's a new thing. Are you yeah. teaching that? Yeah. I as well as doing everything else. Well, that's been kind of the challenge right now for me. It's, it was a little overwhelming at the beginning, but it, it's, a one, it's one course. I have one class per week, so it's manageable, but I teach songwriting. Right. So that's, one, it's flattering to be offered a job like that. It, it was basically handed to me. Um, and I thought, well, I'm not touring right now, and I'm I'm working on new material, and um, I've always wondered what that would be like. And my friends tell me I'm really bossy, so I'd be a great teacher. <laughs> so I thought, okay, like you know, so I committed to one semester, so we're just past the halfway mark now. So I've you know I've done two assignments, and I obviously have to prep the class, and we do a lot of history, but also a lot of like in-class songwriting, and it's actually really fulfilling. I've worked with young people before on songwriting. I, I really like it actually. It does keep me really busy though. I was, well, I was it's kind say, of insane, but. but. But also, by default, what you're doing is you're then generating more songwriters coming out of yeah. songwriters as a result. So yeah. it's it, you know, sort of almost like self fulfilling prophecy at the end of the day. You're going to end up seeing yeah. people you know, writing. You know, where that, where that works. And everywhere that I can like give back, I think that it's really fulfilling that way too. And, and there's that saying of you really understand something when you're able to teach it to someone else. Obviously I've been writing for more than half my life. I've been yeah. songwriting forever. But when you kind of break it down and try to explain it to someone else, I mean songwriting is actually really hard to explain. It's hard to teach. Uh, yeah. Lyrics are one thing, but you know, melody, I do a lot by ear, you know, like music training on that side is kind of hard to teach to like your novice 
like these are kids that are learning about audio production. They're not yeah. necessarily there to be songwriters. Yeah. So it's all over the map, and that's actually really fun too. That there's just a, there's so many different stages. Well, that's that, as you say, that's 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 interesting because at the same time, by default, you're teaching them. They're looking up. They're, obviously, you're you your teacher, so they will look up to you from that mm-hmm. point of view. If you were looking up to somebody else, who would you want to share a stage? Completely, who would you want to share, dead or alive, who would you want to want to share a stage with, oh, if you could? That's a great question. Um, Dolly Parton. Ah. That would be awesome. She's <laughs> an amazing songwriter and storyteller. Um, I really like. Um, I really like a band called Death Cab for Cutie. And yep. Ben, ben Gibbard is the primary, he's the singer and lead songwriter in that band, and he's one of my favorite songwriters. Like, he's, when I listen to their records, all I think of is, oh, I wish I would have wrote that. You know, that's the best songwriting when you just wish that you would have thought of that first. Yeah, I, I, I had a, 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 a slightly different experience. I gave up writing anything. Because, Why? Well, because, well, for about five years, because really simply, somebody else came along who wrote everything that I ever thought about, you know, wow. just to capture all that emotion. Yeah. And I just thought, oh my God, there's no point. In... And so I, you were I, their biggest fan, obviously. Well, yeah, and I just got them completely blown away. Yeah. Uh, simply because they, was, they I'm like, I can't write. So you were just like, oh, yeah. I give up. <laughs> yeah, and then you don't, because yeah. what happens is then you come back and, and go, you're yeah. And you get inspired by it. Yeah, you get inspired, yeah. or you, yeah. change, you, know, you have another experience, or mm-hmm. something changes you, and then yeah. it moves you on from that point of view. Yeah, we all get a little bit stuck, though, or we get in, like, phases. I mean, when I tour, it's hard for me to, to it's not hard for me to write, but someone asked me in an interview one time about that. They said, yeah. you know, when you're touring, like, how do you stay writing, or how, how are you writing your next record? And I was like... That's what that is, okay? Because I've been having that issue. Like yeah. the ideas come, that's always easy for me. But it's a sitting down and finishing that has been really tough for me. So okay, now that, that that's 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 understandable. That's so understandable. I made it. I made that distinctive. Like no more touring until the record is done. So that's kind of like why I'm in town and like yeah. bunkering down. And I'm working on a live record. It's a whole other side note. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Coming up. Yeah. Perfect. Talking about the. Um, New material, mm-hmm. and also then you might just mention their live album as well. Yeah. So, is is that your next goal to, to have the live album, or yeah. are you then writing material for that as well? Well, I'm simultaneously doing those. Uh, of right course, now. I am. Cause yeah, of course. An- Angela's a juggler. Should put it on my resume. <laughs> um, but the live record's going to be done before Christmas for sure. And speaking of the Drake, I'm actually going to be releasing some tracks from that show. Um, which turned out really great. I have a really good friend that I've known for a while. uh, He's the lead um, sound audio engineer at the Mod Club now, and I ended up playing a show at the Mod Club. I opened up for Martin Sexton a few months ago, and it's a great show, and he was doing sound and offered, do you want to to record it off the board? And I was like, awesome, just me and my guitar. So that turned out really great. And then when uh, for that show at the Drake, he also recorded. I've actually have some live recordings from a few different shows, but I think I'm going to be releasing um, tracks from those two shows primarily. And so that's what I've been working on. Like this week is the song selection and the mixing and figuring out what I'd like the cover to be and all that stuff. So that's the first. That's the front burner, and the back burner, well, which has been on the back in the front for about two years now, is like all the songs and breaking it down and narrowing it down to probably 10, 8 or 10. Because I've probably got like 30 something that I kind of have to filter through and, you know. But the beauty of having that, like 30 tracks to pick from mm-hmm. is better than having like 11 tracks and picking from 10 or... Well, that's do, the do, thing, because I've done that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I've learned, you know, take longer, because I really thought I was ready to jump in the studio, you know, last year. And I was to do some singles, mm. for sure. I had some songs that I knew were strong and I wanted them to, to breathe and live as soon as possible. But after that point, I really wasn't ready. And I'm glad that the way it turned, things turned out, I had more time because now I have like a way bigger collection of songs and they just, the cream's just rising to the top. So I think it's gonna be really great. Well, a lot of that is also, I mean, we talked before about, um, you know, the size of Canada and getting to an audience in Canada. Ontario is obviously the largest musical buying audience yes. in Canada anyway. That's so why I'm here. Absolutely, <laughs> in, in the right place. Yeah. But also touring albums is, is and touring your material, it, just without even having the albums there, it takes time. Yeah. You know, it takes time to get across to people, you know, it mm-hmm. really does. And, and I think, you know, we, we talked to big people before about the yeah, album's two years old, what about... And you suddenly realise actually two years old isn't really that old at all. No, it's not. Really and not at all. You, but as an artist, 
I think that's like the artist brain because we're always like, oh, this is so old and we don't want to play our old songs and we're sick of them mm -hmm. or we think everyone else is or whatever. And sometimes your audience, like, you're brand new to them that night or whatever. So when I, I you know, I went to the Netherlands two time, two years in a row and toured there and I real on my second time I realized, like, I don't have any products. Like, so all the people that came, they already had my CD, which is awesome. You know, they knew the words or like, I have some really great fans out there. But then I realized, like, okay, I can't go, like, I don't want to go back and not have anything new. No, no, no. So that's yeah. sort of what stopped the, especially the international tour. And I just was like, okay, I'm not ready. When I'm ready, I'll, it'll be time and I'll know. Yeah. So. No, no, that, that is, that's, that's a very good point because, you know, there, there is, um, it does, it, music does have a shelf life. That's, that's, that's the point. So. Even just in a merchandise way, which, oh, is, you know, like, I, I played, uh, like, this summer, I played a, a bit. Like, I took a little bit of time off of playing as well, even in Toronto, but I had one show to Pedestrian Sundays in Kensington Market, and it was awesome. This guy comes up, I have no idea who he is, like, he's, you know, I'm like, hello, how are you doing? And, and he's filtering through all my stuff, he's like, I already have all of these. Where's the new stuff? And I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever, I don't even know this guy, which is even cooler. I mean, just, and that's when I was like, okay, this is another signal from the universe, like, just like, push forward, you know? Yeah, and, and, and that's the thing, it, it is that continuous development that, um, mm -hmm. that, take, that takes And forward. it takes time. So. It does, oh, of yeah. course. It it's time. easy to beat yourself up over it, especially artists who are just like, now, 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 or like, you know, no, oh, no, everything's no. too old, like, that's no, really I, quick. I, I think there's a website where we've learned is that we came in with some really, really good ideas, and probably, 40% of those ideas were really good, mm -hmm. and the rest That's the thing. still good ideas, yeah. but they weren't ready yet. There's no yeah. maturity for that point yet. You know, we need to move, do something else before we can move on at that point. Yeah. And this, you know, we're going through a significant number of changes ourselves. So mm -hmm. it's understandable, you know, when you say when you get, you get through, um, you know, get to material, mm -hmm. new material, you've got to, one, be comfortable with it, as you say, the cream rises to the top. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to be able to put that out live and road test that a little bit too. Because well, that's, that's the other always, thing. Because sometimes you think it's the best song ever and then you play it and you're like, something didn't quite work there. Or you, the way you thought it would really hit, yeah, yeah. didn't or whatever. So that's really important. Yeah. No, it is. It is important. That is important. Yeah. Right, so that takes us through to the musical part. Now we're into what we call the speed round of doom. Okay. Which may or may not be don't, don't, don't. Uh, don't, it should have it should really have that kind of music rushing across the top of it. Um, so we're gonna run through these in, in some order. Some of them if you it's just the first answer that comes to your head, if you think, oh my god, that's completely inappropriate, then we do that too. Say no, that's happy, well, I'm happy and not prepared to answer that. Okay, so but if I have to pass, I'll say that. Pass is good. Okay. Pass is good. But if what pizza would mostly would more accurately describe your personality? One pizza? Hawaiian. Hawaiian. Sweet and salty. Sweet and salty. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, fine. And then this becomes slightly controversial. If you choose which, there's been a lot, sadly, of musical celebrities dying this year in particular. I'll be honest. And it yeah. becomes almost um, every morning gets an obituary from yeah. my point of view. Yeah, it's been a rough year. But if you were to choose which one of the following had to actually be the one that gets the headline tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Is it going to be Van Morrison, Johnny Rotten, Kanye West, Bob Dylan, or Sting? Johnny Rotten. Johnny Rotten. He's had a pretty good run, to be honest. Like, <laughs> he did a lot of drugs. Yeah, yeah. He, he yeah. Uh, I, um, he called me a horrible name once, so that's probably. Uh, there you that, go. There you There's go. Probably the something. Yeah, there you go. In, in, if you had a choice, would you choose one horse-sized duck or one hundred duck-sized horses? Oh my gosh! Someone just asked me this question. Uh, the hundred duck-sized horses. Yeah. 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 Okay. That, that would I be your have an interesting theory on this if you want Go to. On, no, 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 no. Because if you're up against, all, they, they, they're much smaller, so their teeth, they can't harm you as much. But just imagine a duck the size of a horse. Mm -hmm. First of all, it could, you, it could just use you. First of all, there's so many things I want to say, but you could, even if you wanted to get all of those duck sized horses, yeah. You could take one and then just use it and maim the others, like grab it by the tail. Like there's ways you can you can yeah. use the number of them to beat them all. Okay. Like, can you imagine a beak that big? Really? It's it's huge. Like terrifying. Like yeah. my head would like could swallow me whole. <laughs> terrifying. Fair that was an easy one actually. Okay. That was right. easy one. Yeah. Um, hamsters or tarantulas? Uh, hamsters. Hamsters? Yeah. Yeah. Like, does anyone ever say they like tarantulas? Yeah. Really? Yeah, they do. Yeah. That's not my personality. <laughs> yeah. That was an easy one too. Okay. Hey. Should Canada Goose Nuggets be available in McDonald's? Uh, no. No? No. Just, no. Well, I'm, I'm not a vegetarian, so I, I support nuggets. I'm totally fine with nuggets. 
But the Canada Goose ones, why wouldn't you do that? I mean, they already stuffed them in all the coats and all that business, right? So. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. They're making a the contribution. Yeah. yeah. Although, I mean, I do want them to use all the animals. So if it needs to go there, go there. Okay. I'm Fair supported enough. it. Okay. Yeah. Beetles or stones? Beetles. Beetles every time. Yeah, I shouldn't say that in this bar, but. No, no, that's yeah. fine. You can say whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. Beetles or stones. Okay. Um, ketchup or brown sauce? Ketchup. Yeah. Okay. I have a sweet tooth. Fair enough. It's true. And um, what vegetable would best describe Toronto? Zucchini. I don't know why I said that. That's it's okay. kind of it's kind of exciting if you treat it a certain way, mm -hmm. but it can also appear very dull. Very nutritious. Large. Yep. Green. Green. I missing that one out. It kind yeah, of no, that's okay. That's yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, it does seem like when it comes, is the, yeah. is, is the I should have said cabbage because you know cabbage talents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, but, no, I wasn't quick enough on that. No, that's okay. Zucchini yeah. is, is good. Yeah. Um, okay, that brings us to the end today. Thank you very much indeed. That was really My fun. First Thanks are to Angela for, clearly for her time. Uh, details of all of um, the, all your websites, etc., will be in the uh, in the credits as they roll cool. roll through. Thanks, obviously, to the Factory Girl and George, to Angela and Yestin for covering this. Full details of Factory Girl's location again are in the um, are in the credits. Subscribe to the YouTube link, and with also contains details of the uh, DCC site. Till next time, thank you. I've never owned a poncho Whenever it rains I only see a rainbow Splashing through the puddles Knowing that's how green grass grows Only sun comes through my window It's cold Must be a great day 